Susan, and today I want to show you how you can take one of these Vera Bradley bags that I found in the thrift store and alter it. Now, a lot of them aren't really my taste. They're not really my color palette, but I like to take these inexpensive beads that you can pretty much find anywhere. These are just basic china beads, and I like the mixes in this because it had the green and the purple that were very similar to this bag and similar to all those little flower designs involved. So I thought I could probably separate these and use them to decorate this bag and create something completely new. Now I want you to notice that this design up here is very faded. These purses really fade quite quickly. They don't really last that well, but the, it had a neat design. I think it has some potential. I don't have to keep the exact design. Don't feel just because that's the way it's laid out. You have to follow it. This is your art and do it how you prefer. And let me show you the back because I haven't decided what I will do with the back. The back is quite pretty. I actually really like the back. And Right around this flap here, there is a magnetic clasp. You want to be careful not to bead underneath that flap. Otherwise, the clasp may not work and your bag may not close properly. So I just took a Sharpie marker and put a little line there so I knew where to bead underneath. And I got very carried away with the Sharpie marker. It was just going to originally be to touch up those purple edges on the trim. And then I realized that it really toned this down and gave it more of a batiki type of a look, which I liked so much better that I probably could have over dyed the bag, but I didn't have any purple dye anyway. And my Sharpie marker was handy, so I used it up and I basically covered that whole area where the stripe is and then I kept getting carried away and carried away. But wait until you see how beautiful this becomes. And hard to believe this is actually the same purse. I'm sure you're looking at this saying, no way, how did it turn purple? I got a little carried away with the Sharpie marker, you see? I was just going to color in here to try to even this out to put the flowers in. And then I sort of kind of liked the way this looked with this darker color. I liked the way this kind of had a batik feel to it. And I just got carried away. This is the previous purse I wanted you to see. I left this intentionally. I obviously will still dye this with the rest of the marker. But this gave me a good line of where to bead beyond here. So I didn't have to worry about getting any of this latch involved. So this will work perfectly. You see the beading as you've added it to the bottom. Now, how did I do each of these stitches? The easiest way I could think of doing this was, it was hard to get this one in the camera. I did previously film it, but I don't like the way it came out. So what I've decided to do is show you how I've done these stitches on some other bags because you know I love to show you other things. Now, let me show you the sides. I've beaded all along the edges here just to add a little bit more detail just a little more something I can add. And on the back, I have just used a Sharpie marker and it really gave a really cool batiki kind of a look to this. So I was actually very happy with it. I even did the cord and everything, so it, it's all fine and it doesn't rub off on your hands because it's alcohol ink, so it actually stains it. My little zipper pulls, I have just added some beads to those, taken the Vera Bradley off, and I've added a pod to this one because it's just easier to grab and you could add them to any of the zipper pulls inside if you wanted to, like there's one in here if you wanted to make it easier to grab. I find that one just fine the way it is, but up to you. I like to have all the little embellishments changed, and if you looked at this now, you would never say that this was that same Vera Bradley bag. So, so I'm starting out with this Vera Bradley bag. I'm loving this design piece right here, this stripe. This would be really nice to follow. And I'm not really fond of this color mix, it's kind of ugly, but I'm feeling when we over dye it, it'll look a lot better. This is just too garish, there's just too much going on. If you like this, then keep this and work over it with it and add colors to it. Just not my palette. Well, even though I put the blue dye on this bag, I've rinsed it out, it really didn't take it. It settled down some of the yellow colors that were really bright, but it's not quite dark enough for me. And I'm feeling maybe if I put some magic marker on top of it, it can tone some of this down. I don't mind if it almost blends in with the navy, but I don't want it this dark. It's just too much going on for me to bead. If you wanted to, you could just bead these patterns out but because I really like to alter things and make them my own, I'm just gonna go over this with the Sharpie 
and see if I can tone it down. I'm thinking starting out with this strip right here would probably be the easiest and show you how I put the flowers on top the same as I did with the purse. And right there that tones that down quite a bit. You can see from this half to this half where this will be much nicer as a background. If you were beating over it that would be fine but I'm going to make another pattern on top of this and I just want this as a subtle background. And that definitely toned that down quite a bit as you can see from this side. Now the side is very pretty, don't get me wrong, but it's just too much with my beading. So that's why I like it a little bit more subtle. If you like it bright like that, leave it. Here's just an example of some of the beads that I like to use. These are the most inexpensive beads you get from China. I know some of you are going to be snubbing these and saying I would never use those. That's fine, I don't care. But there's a lot of people out there that can't afford the high-end beads for just bead embroidery. If you're just putting it on a purse or something decorative, you really don't need to use the perfect Japanese Czechoslovakian, those really high-end beads. You can use these beads. Now the problem with these beads for jewelry is some of the finishes have a tendency to rub off, so they're not the best for jewelry. But for decorative embroidery, they're fabulous and they're really inexpensive. I bought this whole tray. These were all 50 cents a bag off of AliExpress. I'll put the link below, but you can buy China beads from anywhere. They've been around for years and years and you can also buy these that are in the little boxes. You can find them in the hobby stores. They come in these type of boxes. They, all the uneven beads that are very inexpensive in the hobby stores, even the Dollar Tree ones are like this. I've just put a couple packages together. Here you can get them in little jars. They're all China beads. They're uneven, they're inconsistent, and the, the coloring can rub off. Will they rub off if you put them on a purse or a jacket or something like that? No, they've been used in the garment industry for years and years. So these are not something you have to directly get from China. You can find these in any of the craft stores anywhere around. They are really reasonably priced and like these were half price. So this was $2 instead of $4. And these are huge tubes of beads. This one was $2.50 because it was half price, so I look for them on sale. This one is the one that I've done that first purse with, and the green one, and it came in this mix of colors, which was really nice because I just picked out the colors I needed. But any way you find them, you will find that they will do the trick. Now, when you look at these close up, you can see there's larger and smaller sizes. In bead embroidery on a decorative piece, you really don't notice that, and I take those bigger ones and literally just pitch them. There's enough consistent smaller ones that make some pretty work. So don't feel bad if you don't have high-end beads for this. It doesn't matter, you can still make some beautiful things. I found a nice assortment of flower beads, and this is how I've decided to put them on. The easiest way to keep my pattern is I just like to put them across in a row. That way I know how I had them placed. I have a needle with Nymo thread. I'm using this yellow so you can see. You can use any color you like. And I'm just going through the inside of my purse here. And I'm just making a starting stitch, which means I'm going up through that and back up. You can see I have a stitch right where I've started. I'm just going to go back up through that stitch. You add my flower bead and a two millimeter crystal. And I'm going to go back down through the flower exactly where I want the flower to sit. So pick a spot if I didn't, if I wanted it over here, I could move it now. Once I put the second stitch in, it's locked. And I want it right there. You can see why I wanted to settle out those leaves because I didn't want them to fight with the flowers. You could have put a size 15 bead on the end, but I'm just showing how you can do this with just some inexpensive china beads. I will come back up and forth three times so that I add three crystals in the center of each of my flowers. And I will just continue adding my beads, my flower beads, all the way down the side of the purse. Now the nice thing about this leaf design is it gives me a line to follow just in the center of these leaves. 
is exactly where I want to add my flowers. I've added a second stripe at the bottom the same way as I did the top and up here I've decided I'm going to cover these leaves with beads all of these leaves here and then do the flower I think those would make a really pretty accent to create my flower I'm going to just make the arch of the center of the leaf and you can create this however you visually decide you see it there is no rhyme or rule or reason there is no right or wrong this is all your imagination and just play and I'm going to do it the same way where I add four beads and go in between the two. The lovely part of this design is it gives you something to follow. To add the little side branches that go on the side of your leaves, the petal part, I'm just going to add some contrasting seed beads. I like to add a little bit of a lighter seed bead and just decide where you want them. And once again, it's basically the same exact stitch. And you can see I'm just going to graduate how many beads I put down and just sort of follow the pattern in the background. And if you don't like the pattern, you want to change it, it's yours, feel free. Don't let that dictate. Just like I put the flowers here, I didn't let the leaves that were there dictate. I could have done leaves there, but do work with what you have. Do what makes you happy. Now for these longer branches, I will just add as many as I need and then reinforce them as I go. So here, instead of four, I will put in my larger amount and I will just go through two beads, reinforce, go down and reinforce the back of it. my leaves all finished here and you can see what a difference it makes when you just put those beads on top and I'm just going to use this flower design and this flower basically comes around here like this and this is another flower over here I have this darker purple and then this metallic purple that's about a good size for the flower I want to go a little further than this design here and now I'm just like I did with the leaves I'm going to go up to I'm coming up through the middle two. I'm going to go down and then add another strand next to it. And I will continue that all around this flower and probably reverse it for this flower so that it's more of a contrast with the edge there. Now here I've got to fill in the middle there because clearly you can tell it's going to not match up if I go like that. It's going to be a V. 
So I'll fill this part in with that more purplish, metallic purplish color. I have all of the flower finished up. I'm adding a three millimeter crystal and a size 11 blue bead. And I am just going to pass through the blue bead once and then go back through the crystal so that the blue bead is a stopper bead. I want these crystals, these little bicones, to stand up. And you can see how it's standing directly up. And when I stack them all next to each other, they will create this interesting kind of a texture. I'm just feeling that this kind of pinkish purple over here needs to balance a little over here and a little around here. And the easiest way I can think of doing that is bringing in just some little sprouts, so to say, of beads. And what I'm going to do is just take three of my seed beads and I'm going to go through the first bead. So back down. and come back up in between and tack the other two down. We'll tack the first one down. Now you can tack them down by going in between them or going through them. Whichever way is easier for you, it will work either way. And I'm just going to go across and sew through this other bead. So it doesn't pop up and you have a perfect three beads. And I am not doing any rhyme or reason to this. Wherever they go, they go. I want it to be kind of natural looking. And you can see it's pretty simple. And just adding all those little bits just gives a whole different feel to this and kind of takes this purplish color and brings it all together. I just wanted to show you the finished piece completely. I also added a little pod at the end here because I thought this was kind of more fun than the ribbons. I also did a little beading on the sides and I didn't do the back, but you can see I did use the Sharpie marker on the back. I just didn't have time. I wanted to get this video finished, but I think it's a great little purse because it fits a phone and a credit card. It's got this nice little handle for the beach, whatever. I thought it was a really cute piece, but I love the way this color palette is now. It's so much more subtle, it's so much more me, and this one is my favorite one because I think this one is totally not my palette. It's just too graphic. I don't do graphic prints, and I'm sure some of you will love these and work with the graphic print. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. It's just not me. I prefer a little bit more muted palette, but these are really pretty because they have a batik look once you over dye them. And these Vera Bradleys get to have a used look on this edge here. This seems to wear poorly and over dyeing it will fix that perfectly. Now, of course, the navy blue on it will stay navy blue. I can't lighten that. This, this one has a nice long strap that came with it. It also has the wristlet strap, the concept of a wallet. And then your wallet pack here where I'd love to put a phone and you can see it's Vera Bradley all over it. So I am going to take these over dye them and come back. Here's the wallet that I've dyed and I've rinsed it and it kind of came out a little uneven. Um, just not really thrilled with the color. It's only okay. I'm not feeling this turquoisey color very much. So the easiest way to get rid of it, I'm thinking I should have just done from the beginning was a Sharpie marker. For a bag this small, this would have probably been easier and faster and less messy, but we learn and now you've learned from my video so you don't have to make the same mistake. So I'm just gonna take some Sharpie marker and just darken up some of this and you'll see. I actually like that a whole lot better. It just tones it down. It's not a huge amount, but I'm going to continue doing the bag and I haven't decided if I'm going to add any other colors to it, but I'm definitely going to do some beading on top of this and I'll come back and show you the finished beading just so you can get some ideas of what you can do with different prints and different designs. Much better. Now, don't be afraid to use a lighter 
Sharpie and if you find out that it's just not enough contrast, you can go back with a darker one. Always work from light to dark because once you put this on, you can't take it off. It's better to just put several coats on until you get it the way you want it first. Now here I've just taken a darker Sharpie and just highlighted some accents. And you can make this blend by taking the lighter Sharpie and just blending it and bleeding that ink over. And here is that wallet that I over dyed and then I ended up taking some Sharpie to it because it still didn't take enough of the dye. In the future, unless it's a larger bag, I would just stick with the Sharpie with the smaller bags. Now I did not do a lot of beading on this bag and I have to tell you, I don't recommend buying this bag for beading. I had learned the hard way and I wanted to share it with you. That's why I kept it included rather than leaving it out. This piece up here has a piece of plastic in it to make it strong and rigid so it's an easy piece to pick up. Well, it's really difficult to bead through this. And you really can't bead through it, so you have to try to bend it and move the needle around. And it, it took me twice as long to bead this than the other pieces. But I wanted to see if I could do it. It was more about the challenge. And it had the same problem with this front piece and the back piece. So I still thought it looked pretty. It was still a better makeover than what it looked like before. And I added these two little pods on the ends for the zippers. And it's still a nice enough wallet that you could fit a phone inside of this one too. And, and this is a plus size phone, so it, it fits a pretty big phone. And take it to the beach or whatever. It has a little hand piece right here that I also colored or dyed, whatever you want to call it. But it's a, a great little piece if you've got the wherewithal to bead through all of this. I just didn't, maybe it was because this was my third piece. But I really enjoyed altering these bags because it was just taking something that I would never think to use and basically making it new again. Let me give you a quick review on this one. Now on the top here, it's all encrusted with beads. If you wanna know how I did that, it was very simple. I just took three beads and strung them through and kept looping them through and through and through until I created this beautiful kind of a texture that was all solid. Now, it will take you some time. I'm not gonna lie about that, but I really thought it made it worth it, gave it so much texture. And these stripes were once again done just with the four beads added, go through two, come back through. It's basically all the exact same stitch. It's just a matter of here I followed the design on the bottom and up here I just created some of my own design. So it's just a matter of playing around and seeing what you can do and what talks to you. So I hope I've inspired you to look at old things and think of how you can create them and make them new again. So if you have any old fabric purses, they don't have to be Vera Bradley, they can be any brand. Take them over or just add to them and make them your own. I hope you enjoyed that and thanks for watching.